Today's scripture comes from the book of John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he turned and said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Let's join in prayer. Holy God, pray this day that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts may be acceptable in your sight, for you are indeed our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, two days ago we celebrated uh, July the 4th and the 238th anniversary of our country declaring itself uh, free of the British Empire and its rule. So as we celebrate our freedoms today, I thought we might uh, want to hear from an anonymous source about a few uh, things that make us unique today. He writes, only in America can a pizza get to your house faster than an ambulance. <laughs> only in America do people order double cheeseburgers, a large fry, and a Diet Coke. <laughs> Anybody else done that? No. All right. So, only in America do banks leave both doors open and then chain pins to counters. <laughs> only in America do we buy hot dogs in packages of ten and buns and packages of eight. <laughs> and last, only in America do we use the word politics to describe the process so well. Poly in Latin means many, and ticks in English means blood-sucking creatures. <laughs> so, with all, all due respect, When our, uh, when our uh, country began in July 1776, of course, uh, America was not known for any of those things, but instead it was known for its declaration of independence and the following revolution uh, against the British Empire. And then over the next 10 and then 20 years, it, it came to be known for that uh, rather unique uh, experiment that our founders uh, set us upon uh, to really be a government of, for, and by the people. And indeed, sometimes we forget that that experiment continues and that it's up to us to do our part as our ancestors have done in, in making it a successful experiment. Now, of course, <clears throat> we know that sometimes and our elected officials do uh, stray a little bit off 
course from that principle. And uh, But over the great length of our country, whenever that has happened, our country has always gone back to its equilibrium and found ways to correct its course and, and return to that core principle of government uh, for and, and by the people. Then I was thinking about that this week, and uh, it occurred to me that we really cannot fault the politicians too much on that when they forget what type of government we have, because all too often we, the people, fail to live up to our part uh, of the bargain. Too many of us seem to uh, forget our role in governing the country. And we do that when we turn away from almost any uh, level of participation. You know, by not educating ourselves uh, about issues, whether they be local, state, or national in scope, by failing to act upon those uh, issues either directly or, or even by uh, contacting our representatives about them or even writing a letter to the editor uh, about them. And of course, most famously, we forfeit our role by uh, neglecting to vote. I think in the recent elections in the spring, uh, less than 10% uh, voted in any particular election. And, and you know, you, you understand uh, why people back uh, back away from it. Uh, I remember my, uh, my son and uh, I were discussing politics in front of our daughter-in-law, and she said, "Just quit talking about it. I, you know, I don't want to hear about it. It just divides people." And, and, and indeed, why get involved with something so messy and uh, divisive? Uh, all you can do is uh, end up being divided and dirty, right? And, and there's a truth in there. But there's also a truth that when we forfeit our participation in our way of government, that threatens our way of life more than the politicians might do. And, and obviously it also devalues the courage and heroism of men and women who have given their full participation in letting us worship today. Uh, I, I checked on uh, the internet this week, if you can believe the internet, 2.7 million Americans uh, have been killed or wounded in wars since 1776. I remember talking to a man named um, Tyg Matthews and uh, Tig was in the Marines in World War II. Many of us weren't even alive back then, but uh, if you studied it, you know of the uh, island island hopping the United States Marines did. And Tig was on five uh, of those islands that were invaded in the first five waves to invade places like Iwo Jima, you know, Guadalcanal, uh, and others. And he told me about 10 years ago that he still had nightmares about it. You can imagine why. So as we celebrate today, I also hope we ponder rather soberly our responsibility as civilians because we've indeed been blessed uh, by God and by our founders uh, with this government that we honor and celebrate today. And it's because of that, you know, that we can peaceably worship as Laura prayed. They're not doing this with Christians in China or Syria or Iraq or across the northern part of Africa. Now, of course, there's a long history, long biblical history of people walking away uh, from uh, involvement in the government, in their own direct action. And when people, the ancient Hebrews, did that, uh, they often wanted uh, somebody else to rule over them, you know, somebody else to make decisions. 
So mo most often they wanted to find a, a leading man, you know, a, a king, a king to make their decisions and solve their problems. And the first instance of that happening is way, way back about 3,000 years ago. And some of you might have read the Bible and you've heard of the people called the Philistines. Well, the, well, the Philistines learned to smelt iron. And what that meant is they had iron weapons and they had iron chariots and the Hebrews had no defense against them. And the Philistines would invade the country and uh, conduct raids against the farms in, in Israel. So the people prayed to God to give them a king. You know, they thought they needed a hero, a warrior king. And we can learn something about that from God's response to them. You can read about it in 1 Samuel 8. God said, be careful what you ask for, because you might get it. So God gave them what they wanted, uh, beginning with the uh, somewhat psychotic reign of a king named Saul. And then the Hebrews went on to suffer hundreds of years of wars, uh, invasions, intrigues, rebellions, uh, and even separation of each other in a civil war, and then later exile and, and dissolution of the state. They lost it all. You know, the, the years of the kings and the strong men were unhappy ones. But human memories are, are short. So we fast forward to Jesus' time, 500 years after the exile, and the people were looking for a king again. You know, they wanted a hero, someone to unite them, drive the Romans out. You know, and up walked, or down came Jesus. Uh, and he did and said things uh, that led people to believe he was the one uh, who would who would lead them. He would ride to the rescue. You know, high of silver away, you've heard of that. And so Jesus seemed to be the real mill deal. He seemed to be the one who would fulfill their dreams. Uh, just as we heard Crystal read the story today, he filled their bellies. So in John 6.15, though, we read that on that day, when the food was eaten and things were cleaned up, he had fed the 5,000, the people tried to make him king uh, by force, opposite of the way things are normally done. And indeed, he refused. He walked away. People do want heroes. And, and over the centuries, human kings made for good stories. But the kind of kingdom Jesus brought was of divine and not human origin. So he believed that power was best given away. So he calls people like you and me to be part of a living body of Christ, each one of us, and join with God in helping bring about God's kingdom. Now, now that's big news. You're called to join in his kingdom. And, and you're called to participate in it. And, and you're called to join with him every day in bringing it about and to bear its fruits and enjoy its fruits. But, but let's remember how Jesus ruled most important thing he did was he, he rejected the roar of the crowd and the call to be king, and instead he gave himself to be condemned and to die on a cross. And, and before that, instead of being weighted on hand and foot like we uh, think of kings, 
he washed feet of his subjects and he, he waited on them. So you see, he perfected his power in giving it away and in giving us the example to follow uh, in our life. And it is interesting to me to note that some 1,750 years after Jesus, our founders returned to a similar principle for our country, and that is inclusion and involvement of people like you and me in keeping it vibrant and vital. And the invitation, as with Jesus, is, is there uh, every day. <laughs> the funny thing is, it might have been otherwise for us, you know, because right after the American Revolution, uh, when the British were on their way back to England, uh, George Washington was riding high in the polls, so to speak. I, I imagine he had some close to 100% popularity rating. So as the war ended, the Continental Army, or at least a lot of officers in it, looked over at the Continental Congress and they said, you know, these guys are bozos. We don't want them over there. So we want to make George king. And George Washington said no. He said that he didn't fight George the Third so he could become George the First. Yeah, so he also, in some way, gave away this call to power. Uh, I suspect because he too recognized the importance of this principle he was fighting for of government of for. And, and by the people. So we celebrate many things today, in, in, including the fact that just as God blesses us with power and invitation to be part of his kingdom, we're also blessed with the ability and the power and the invitation to be active citizens uh, and join together in governing our country. You know, so truly, to maintain our freedoms and the integrity of our way of life, we're going to need to be uh, involved. Uh, we can't leave it to the men and women of the military to fight our wars and then walk away from our responsibilities. So we uh, need to get involved. And you think about it, not just give our nation your money, but also your time. So we want to celebrate our, our freedoms, but we also want to work to keep them. But at the same time, as Christians, we need to realize our ultimate allegiance um, is to God. And, and it's good for us to remember that, that we're called to be active in his kingdom too. Because, you see, his earthly power is lived through us or not as part of the body of Christ. And we are to be that living body doing our work for others. It is in his kingdom we find our lives and our destinies. Let's pray. Holy God, this day we celebrate who we are, where we live, but we also come to worship you. Humble us in any pride we have, making us aware not only of our freedoms, but also that others have given their lives for them. And grant us the urge and ability to join as citizens of this country in keeping her great. And grant us the faith and will to join in you as citizens of your kingdom, working to bring that kingdom to earth. Give us perspective this day, not only to celebrate, but to love and serve you. Amen.